Hello everybody, and welcome to Fallen Sandwich Gaming, and our Let's Play of Mech Warrior 5 Mercenaries. So this is a fun game, um, you know, I want to bring something a little new, a little different to the channel. So, we're going to start off with House Liao here, in the year 3015. As you can see, there's a lot of starts, um, you know, Free Rasselhag Republic, some of these starts... A couple of these starts are definitely geared towards playing later in the game. Uh, you get a better selection of mechs. And this is a really fun game. I'm hoping it ends up being a really fun series. And uh, let's jump in and see how it goes. Confirm. Yep, new career. In 2108, humanity began colonizing the stars. Their reach would eventually span a vast region of space known as the Inner Sphere. During its golden age, under the governance of the Star League, the Inner Sphere experienced unprecedented peace, prosperity, and technological advancement. But with a great rise comes a great fall. Beset by greed and mistrust, humanity splintered. The Star League crumpled. Technological advancement slow. The great houses, each vying for supremacy, turned on one another, engaging in a series of conflicts known as the Succession Wars. Amidst this chaos, mercenaries became the proxy forces for the great houses. Numerous battlefields sprung up across the inner sphere, dominated by hulking war machines known as Battle Max. The year is now 3015, and these steel behemoths have become the tools of the mercenaries' trade. It's a lucrative time, yet one beset with perils of all kinds. Only the most skilled and brave among them will rise to become legend. Okay, that's a really cool opening, and it uh, it does break down the premise of this game a little bit. Um, to make a long story short, you are the captain leader of your own mercenary company, and you're going to take contracts and kind of build up your mercenary outfits. You see, career mode is an open-ended, mercenary-focused experience. You're free to travel and explore the inner sphere as you please, running your mercenary company as you see fit. Conflict zones, industrial hubs, and quests from the Nyx Cavaliers campaign are all accessible in this mode, but have been tuned to better reflect your chosen starting location. Additional career mode content also awaits you, such as new conflict zones, biomes, mechs, weapons, and equipment, and unique quests. Good luck, Commander. So let's jump right in. Um... Ooh, gotta pick a name, gotta pick a name. Um... Hmm. Cisco Fallen's Sandwiches. There we are. Uh, pick a little symbol here. That's a f that's a fun one. Let's go with that. Okay. <laughs> There's a preset number of symbols, and not all of them are that great. So, this is your opening screen. You see, we start with a few battle mechs. So we've got the Cicada 3C. The... Firestarter 9H, the Javelin 10, and a Locust 1E, so that's the Laser Locust. So, all of these mechs have different configurations as well, um, and it's a lot of fun to kind of play around with them and, and see what you can do. Let's take a look at our pilots. So I am playing solo, so we're going to have some AI pilots involved. Um, yeah, it's a pretty standard starting group. Um, these are their skill points, so the more skill points they have in any given skill, the better they are at what they're, uh, what they're assigned to do. Now, Wheeler Lawler, <laughs> Lieutenant Lawler here is actually a pretty good fit for our group, and is better than anyone we have at the moment, so I think we're gonna pick Lawler up. Okay. Let's take a look at this transmission. This is Colonel Richard Markson. Hey kid, I heard about your old man biting the big one. Tough break. So this is a toss back to the campaign mode of this game. 
Uh, he was one of the good ones. Rihanna reached out and said you were stepping up and taking over for old Nikolai. Good on you. I wish you all the best. Anyways, I wanted to reach out and chat. Kid, old Nick knew better than most of us that the Interfere can be a harsh place for us smaller Merc outfits, but there's also a lot of need for our services outside with those Comstar Stooges over at the Mercenary View Board we put into one of their contracts. Not everyone can afford to charter a certified MRB back contract, and not every Merc outfit is flashing around regiments worth of battle mechs like they're the next Wolf's Dragoons. There's a lot of need out there on all sides, but if you're savvy enough to know where to look, you can find additional work if you want to take it on. Thing is, these places don't just let anyone in. You need to have some rep for yourself built up to show that you can get the job done. With you and Rihanna starting over, any rep that Nick's Cavaliers might have had is now gone. I can help you get yourself back into that loop, but you'll need to prove to the powers that be that your new outfit still has what it takes to get the job done, even with old Nick no longer around. If you can prove that you still have what it takes, Without your old man around, I'll be sure to open those doors back up for you. It's the least I can do for old Nick. I'll be rooting for you, kid. Best of luck. So current objective, reach Merc Rep level 4. So we start at level 1, so we got a little ways to go. Let's take a look at the news. So this news screen, if you're well-versed in sort of the, you know, Mech Warrior battle tech lore, um, is going to be really fun for you. I'm not, so a lot of this doesn't mean that much to me. Um, but it's a nice little include for the people who are familiar with the universe. Let's take a look at these mechs again. There might be some customization I want to do. PPC and two machine guns. Mm, there's not too much you can really change here. <laughs> Single heatsink, machine gun ammo. Let's move that out of the center torso and into the legs, because I noticed the AI in this game is a little less likely to target the legs. Okay. Pretty light on the armor with the cicada. Uh, oh, cancel that. We're gonna start that work. It's only two grand and it'll only take four days, so we can do that while we're in transit. Take a look at the loadout on the fire starter. So, these jump jets can go. Jump jets are fun, but not necessarily practical. Again, take that machine gun out of the right torso because. If you take enough torso damage, they're going to explode, and then that machine gun ammo is going to explode with it. So actually, how much? That's 5,200 rounds. That's probably fine. Some medium lasers. We've only got two heat sinks. So maybe we'll add in another one. Increase the armor. There we go. Another heat... Well, these heat sinks can actually go in the torso. Okay, go right there. Okay. Let's start that work. Again, 17 days. Transit time will kind of make up for that. Take a look at the javelin here. Again, we just want to ditch any jump jets, because we're really not going to be using them. Um, and when the AI uses them, they tend to say suspended in air for too long. And, hmm, are we stuck? We are stuck having the SRM ammo in the torsos. So we'll keep it all on the same side if we can. And we'll move the heat sinks over to the other side so they don't blow up with it. Okay. Uh, we are 27 out of 30, so let's max the armor. Okay, that's good enough for me. Let's start that work. And take a look at the locust here. So this is the laser locust. Um, yeah, this is probably what I would do with it. So we're going to leave the laser locust be. Um, we're gonna level out of the locusts very quickly. So let's take a look at our star map. <coughs> mm. Excuse me. So, on our star map, there's two big things to take note of, and that is conflict zones. So you can see recommended reputation 2 to 4, so this might be a little beyond our capabilities. And industrial hubs. So, in, in conflict zones, it's very expensive to maintain your machinery, but that's where you're gonna get all your contracts. So, when you take a certain amount of damage, you're going to want to bounce out to an industrial zone where you get a discount for doing repairs instead of taking a penalty. So let's see. This is 1 to 2. That's probably where we're going to start out. All right. So let's see. These are symbols for contracts. So you can see there's a garrison duty contract and a targeted kill contract, but that's that's times 2. That's multiple missions across two different people. So you can see this kind of breaks down... You know, like, if you've seen a mech before, it'll tell you what mechs you're likely to face in what faction. There's a ton of factions in this game. Um, the big ones are the noble houses, but there's also, you know, periphery realms. Um, there's independent factions. There's pirate factions. So there's a lot of different people you can work for and build relation with. Um, 
Let's see. House Liao is definitely somebody we want to build a relationship with because we started in their territory. So it's going to be the easiest to get contracts from them and start building reputation so we can get um, better contract odds, which I will show you in a minute here. So defense contract, I don't think that's really what we're built for. This is two against two more of the great houses. So you want to try not to piss off too many of the, the other great houses. This is a good one. Targeted kill and scorched earth against independence. This is where we're going to go first. So as you can see, there's a 20 day travel time and it costs money to travel. So we really have to manage our cash flow. But all of our mechs that we fiddled around with should be done getting refitted at this point. All right. So now we have contracts. There's also, you know, an equipment page where you can buy things um, for your mechs. And there's a mech market here where you could buy new mechs. As you can see, here's another Cicada 3C, which is pretty cool. And an urban mech. Urban mechs are very common. You're going to see them everywhere in the early game and honestly, even into the late game. Let's take a look at these contracts. So as you can see, contracts are different uh, randomly generated missions. Um, some are storyline missions, but most of these ones that are just out here are going to be randomly generated. So we're against independence. This is ideal because we don't want to piss off uh, the other noble houses too badly. So this gives you a little breakdown. Targeted kill means we're going to have to find and kill other mechs that they have on their hit list here. So we have reports the targeted are traveling together. Um, targeted kills might be a little different than... I might be thinking of assassinations here. But we've discovered the location of a key political rival on Borden 5. It would be beneficial if a neutral, unaffiliated third party did the dirty work for us and eliminated the target. Just try to keep a low profile. So, as you can see, we get negotiation points. Now, C bills are our money. So, if I put a point in here, we go from, you know, 300,000 to 700,000. So, that's pretty big. And then we're probably also going to want to go one point into salvage shares. We also get a 25% bonus for hazard pay. So that's cool. Um, damage coverage is kind of like insurance on the damage your mechs takes. You have to pay for everything in this game, so it's important to kind of weigh those really options. So let's your see here. Now we did pick up a nice new pilot um, in Lieutenant Lawler here. So we're going to put her in the first position with the fire starter. Actually, the fire starter is mostly lasers. So who do we have that's good at lasers? Looks like... Tori Liu, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want to butcher that name, is, has the highest potential with laser weaponry, so we're going to put Tori Liu in there, and then the Javelin is all missiles, so let's see if that fits Lawler's profile a little bit better. Uh, it does, so we're going to go Lawler in the Javelin, and then this is also all lasers, so let's see here. Um, so, Nikolai Ivanov, it looks like Dexter Fong is probably better for that. Actually, might have, uh, two related people here. Alright, so, let's go ahead and start the mission. Well, hold on. Also, you have this deployed tonnage. As you can see, we're under tonnage. Um, a lot of the time, that's going to be concerning because... That usually means they're going to have something heavier than we are. Okay, first mission. Let's see how it goes. So, let me just check these real quick. So we've got PPC on one and machine guns on two. Okay, I'm happy with that. Alright, let's go check it out. So... The benefits of being in a light mech is that we are pretty quick, so we can uh, really tool along. You can see we're going 97 kilometers here. Almost everything is going to be in metric in these games. Um, I'm not sure whether or not they originated in the UK, but that just seems to be the standard practice, um, which is fine. I mean, I use metric every day in my uh, day job, so it's not that different for me, but you know, for some people who aren't used to it, you might need to do the conversion work a little bit. Enemy spotted. Okay. Spotted. Oof. Big Target whiff. Applied. Looks like we got some bad intel. Our target is not here. Let's hope we have better look at the other locations. Tango okay. smoked. 
as you can see, we've got some helicopters and tanks in the area, as well as turrets. Yeah, that PPC really puts in work. We're heading that way, sir. Just gotta keep the squad in line here. Uh, so this is a fun little surprise. Um, get those machine guns going. Okay. Salvage is really good because it's just it's free money if you find it. Ooh, I just got shot by something big. Yeah, this is a little out of range for those. Okay. Now, if you press G, you can move at group speed so everybody stays with you. It's important to just, like, stay on top of the orders to your... Oh, we have an enemy mech. It's a blackjack. Okay, that could be dangerous. It's time to move up the combat speed. Okay. Weird thing about the cicada, I haven't used this mech before, and it's running is just very jerky. Let's try to circle around and take ourselves out of the line of fire for a second. Okay, we managed to take the mech down. Sometimes uh, the AI is useful. Oh, this is another enemy mech here, and that's a hunchback. Hunchbacks can be really, really dangerous. Oof. Well, we knew we were coming in under tonnage. This is a commando here. Standing there. Yep. Okay. Ooh, I think we just took a punch there. Gotta try to take that cannon now. Got an ammo explosion. All right, I think we almost got him down. Gotta be a little careful. As you can see in that bottom left corner, I've taken a lot of damage. So has the enemy mech. Got him. Got him. Got him. Okay. See that? That's the evac point. So now our mission's complete and it's time to get out of here. Oof. Luckily we outweighed that locust, so even though running into him hurt us a good bit, uh, it did not put us down. Let's try to bring our guys up. Okay, luckily we didn't lose any mechs. Um, you know, it can be a little bit concerning coming into these jobs underweight, but whole squad made it out with, uh, you know, manageable damage, uh, hopefully. We'll have to see what the bill looks like, but I'm pretty proud of us on that first mission. I think we, uh, we came out of it okay. Just missed out on being able to pick up a commando, but that's okay. Right now, we're just going to load up on equipment. So we'll try to get the good stuff here. Two, three. You know, I'm not really concerned about what I'm picking up. It's more, um, it's more that we'll take anything at this point. Okay, so pretty good. Um, yeah, as you can see, the javelin got pretty beat up here. He probably was boxing a little bit with the uh, hunchback. So seventy-nine thousand dollars worth of damage there, but 
we still made a pretty good profit, so. Now, it might be pretty expensive to do these repairs. Let's take a look. Yeah, so 51,000. Uh, it's not too bad on the fire starter. The javelin, though, is almost 100 grand. And the locust. So it doesn't make sense to jump for these repairs. Um, even though it's going to take 35% longer in a conflict zone and it's going to cost 25% more, um, it costs us 200,000 to jump out. It costs us 100,000 to jump out and 100,000 to jump back in minimum. So it's probably better to just kind of bite the bullet here and pay for these repairs. So let's take a look. This guy actually lost some components. So if we were to do repair all, all right, we have the components to replace what he lost, so that's okay. Yeah, so 97,000 in 19 days. That's a lot for a javelin, but it happens. And not too bad on the locust, so we're back above 3 mil. That's nice. Uh, let's just take a look if there's anything here that would be helpful. Not really. Is there anything we can sell? Um, this LRM-10 we're not going to have a use for yet. We can sell all the jump jets. I'm not planning on putting those back on. Okay, all the jump jets are gone. Let's take a look back at the mech market. Um, yeah, we're, we're just going to see what other contracts are available. So this is misdirect assault, the scorched earth. So, we are conducting an intelligence gathering raid on Borden 8, and to draw attention away from our actions, we need a diversion. Destroying whatever you find at the marked location should cause enough of a distraction to let us accomplish our goals. But be warned, once you're on route to target, expect opposition. The locals maintain a military militia base in the area and won't take kindly to your presence. Okay, let's jump into the next one. So, both of those negotiation points on this one are going into the payout. Extreme Confirm. Weather warning is in effect, Commander. Okay. So again, we're underweight, but we managed to make it out okay on the last functions. one. And we're going to have to wait 19 days for our mech to be repaired. Okay. I think we're good to go. I am going to probably do a paint scheme for the next episode, but I wanted to get in here and just start, uh, you know, hit the ground running. But you can customize the look of all these mechs. Enemy forces okay. have established a base somewhere Let's in this see. Area. The objective Raising is over here. Just keep an eye out. You want to keep forces. checking your radar if you Good can. Hunting. Pull up the bigger map. So I do think that first mission went well. I mean, we ran into a hunchback and a, um, a blackjack. Both mechs that are kind of above our pay grade at this point, and we handled them. So it's uh, definitely encouraging to know that we can take on those odds a little bit. Yeah, the cicada, when it turns, it's just very wobbly. I guess because it moves so fast and it's, uh, it's very top-heavy, but I haven't piloted this mech in the past, and I can just tell that every time I turn, it swings, even when I only make a small adjustment. Positioning on you, Commander. Just make sure the group stays with me here. Missed that shot. Okay. Okay, we do have a mech up on the hill there. Let's try to keep things moving. Ah! Misjudged the distance there. I don't usually use PPCs either, so... Trying to get used to one on the fly might take a little bit of work. Ooh, that's a panther. So he's got a PPC of his own. Okay, a nice shot on the head there. Don't want to stand still in front of him. Luckily, my team has gotten to work on destroying the objective while I keep this guy busy. Okay, that's his main weapon arm. No, it's not. <laughs> we are going to try to take that weapon arm off, though. The panther would have been nice to salvage, but um, we're doing okay with what we have right now. 
All right, he's down. Oh, he went critical. Got to be careful with the jets too when you knock with the uh, helicopters too when you knock them out of the sky. They they almost try to aim for you. Another mech here. Okay, it's just a locust. Okay, and we took his leg off. So once you take the leg off a locust, they're uh, considerably less effective. And he's down. All right, we did it. We did it. So let's let's head for that evac. You don't get anything extra for staying around in these missions. So get in, get out. like we made it out so that was even that seemed like it went even better it doesn't look like we took much damage at all get a couple extra kills on the way out just for good measure okay so managed to get an AC2 I don't have anything that can use that yet but I'll take it um, machine gun half ammo is cool, so we'll take that also. Yeah, so there you go, damage costs were pretty manageable. Again, the javelin took a little bit of a beating, but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, the only way I could really offset that is if I went into the javelin and maybe swapped these SRM6s for 4s, because um, that would drop some weight and allow me to put some armor back on. That might be worth it. Let me see here. I mean, what's the armor? Oh, the armor's pretty much maxed on this guy as it is, so yeah, it's not going to make much of a difference. Okay, let's repair the locust. Yeah, we can just repair everything here. I don't think anyone took serious damage. And obviously my own mech is a little bit more expensive because it's a... I think it's classed as a medium mech. Alright, get back to the star map. So, um... Actually, when we go back into home, there is one more contract here for the independence against the periphery realms. Hmm. It's another nine, and it's garrison duty. I don't think we're really the type of unit for this. Uh, we definitely are the type of unit that wants to stay mobile. Let's take a look at Cavalier here. So again, these are against other great houses. Hmm. What about New Roland? Against independence, we like that. Um, okay. You know what? Oh, we got a new mission here. Okay, this is good. This is good. This is against independence here. So let's head over to Poos. Yep, hundred thousand dollars just to move over a couple of systems. So gotta keep that in mind when you're jumping around. Okay, let's take a look at the black market here. Ooh, so, some very interesting equipment. We're mostly laser mix, so... Mm, nothing too eye-catching in the laser department. A lot of interesting um, ballistic weapons. Let's take a look at the missile weapons they have. So, these are short-range missiles, long-range missiles. That's really the only difference. Melee weapons and just equipment it's pretty much only ammunition and heat sinks now, do we have anything we can sell uh, not really we want to keep the backup PPC in case something happens to mine okay so let's take a look at our contracts here 
So we've got Refuge or Rubble against House Liao. We have the top rung against House Liao. We have a defense mission. So, defense mission, again, not really this mech company style. We do have a couple more locusts here, but I think we're going to skip that. Um, we are going to take this House Liao defense contract. And we are just going to go for the money again. So we're going to confirm that. And we are going to do this mission to kick off next episode. So thank you so much for joining me here today in episode 1 of our MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries Let's Play. Um, if you enjoyed the content and want to see more, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, and I'm really excited to get this one underway. So thank you guys so much for your time and have a great day.